Welcome to Rise and Bust. In today's episode we will see another Rise and Bust story. We will analyze how it rose to glitter success and then we will understand the mistakes that led to its downfall. And just to let you know, we post well-analyzed and real Rise and Fall stories. Stories of companies and people that once ruled the world, but then busted for small mistakes or series of mistakes. If you are interested in similar stories, then do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Now relax and enjoy the story and let us know in the comments what you learned today. Richard Warren Sears and Alva Curtis Roebuck established Sears Roebuck & Company, more often known as Sears, as a chain of American department stores in 1892. Richard Sears and Julius Rosenwald reincorporated the company in 1906. Initially a mail-order catalog business, it began to build retail sites in 1925, the first being in Chicago. From 1973 until 1995, Sears corporate headquarters were located in Chicago's Sears Tower, today, they are located in Hoffman Estates, Illinois. Sears was the biggest retailer in the U.S. through the 1980s. Its rank in 2018 was the 31st largest. On October 15, 2018, the parent company of Sears filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy after several years of falling sales. On January 16, 2019, it declared that it had won the bankruptcy auction and that just 425 stores, including 223 Sears stores, would remain operating. In 2021, Sears announced that it would dispose of its Hoffman Estates office building. There were still 18 full-line Sears locations, as well as Sears Appliance, Sears Grand, Sears Home Life, and Matrix, as of January 2023. Chapter 1. Rise of Sears. A train station agent, Sears founded the jewelry and mail order watch business to augment his income. In 1887, Sears moved his company to Chicago, and soon after, he employed watch repairman Alva C. Roebuck. Sears sold his company in 1889 and moved to Iowa, intending to become a rural banker. Together with Roebuck, he established another mail order business in 1893, which they called Sears, Roebuck, and Company. By 1894, Sears's catalog had expanded to 322 pages and contained many new products, including bicycles, vehicles, recreational goods, and sewing machines. The business was creating a 532-page catalog by 1895. Sales in 1893 exceeded $400,000. Two years later, they exceeded $750,000. The first significant U.S. retailer to launch its stock in an IPO was Sears in 1906. In Chicago's west side, Sears opened its catalog manufacturing facility and the Sears Commerce Building Tower in 1906. Until 1973, once the Sears Tower was finished, the complex housed the company's corporate offices and was the hub of the mail-order magazine industry until 1995. Under Rosenwald's direction as vice president and accountant, the company's annual revenues increased to over $50 million, $1.5 billion now, in 1907. Sears bought the David Bradley Plow firm in 1910. Chapter 2. Peak Years. Robert E. Wood was appointed to take over after Rosenwald opted to move the focus to urban America. The first department store for the company was designed and built under the direction of Rosenwald. On February 2, 1925, the first store in the North Lawndale Sears, company complex, and Roebuck opened as a test. Despite being far out in the suburbs of Chicago, its success prompted the opening of dozens of more locations across the nation. Due to their remote position from major shopping centers, their cutting-edge store architecture, and their unusual product mix and retailing methods, Sears's retail stores were pioneers. They defied the norms of the time in three different ways. Merchandising requirements rather than a desirable external appearance influenced the architecture. Due to this, the businesses served as outstanding examples of the era's modern architecture. In addition, Sears was a leader in developing gender-neutral department shops. 
hardware and building supplies, were available at the stores. The first Sears Christmas catalog, the Sears Wish Book, which featured toys and gifts, was published in 1933. It included fully prepared Sears catalog home kit houses from 1908 through 1940. In 1947, Sears established its first location in Mexico City. In the United States, Canada, and Mexico, Sears constructed numerous metropolitan department shops from the 1920s to the 1950s. It established the Home Art Design Company in 1959 to build malls. Since the 1980s, many of the company's locations have undergone extensive restorations or replacements. In the 1970s, Sears achieved its peak. Sears built the 110-story Chicago Sears Tower in 1974. It became the highest skyscraper in the world, surpassing the original Twin Towers in New York as the record holder. In 1988, Sears auctioned the Sears Tower after leaving Chicago. Chapter 3. Mail Order. The industry named the Sears catalog the Consumer's Bible. In the years following the American invasion of Greenland during World War II, the company sold to overseas clients, including the Philippines, where people placed orders from catalogs left by soldiers. However, as the country became more urbanized, city department stores began to compete with Sears catalog business. Rural America's population grew slowly and had significantly lower disposable income than urban America. Chapter 4. Fall of Sears. The business started branching out into non-retail companies in the 1980s by purchasing Dean Witter and Coldwell Banker in 1981. It debuted the Discover credit card in 1985 after launching Prodigy as a partnership with IBM in 1984. However, it has been claimed that these moves diverted management's focus away from the primary retail operation and gave rival shops a considerable advantage, ultimately leading to Walmart overtaking Sears as the biggest retailer in the US in 1990. In the 1990s, the firm started getting rid of many non-retail businesses hurting its finances. Dean Witter Reynolds, as well as Discover Card, were among the brokerage firms that made up Sears Financial Services division that was later spun off. In 1995, it disposed of Homeart, a business that built malls, to general growth properties. The once powerful general merchandise catalog's distribution costs were unaffordable, and both sales and profitability had dropped. In 1993, the company stopped publishing the catalog. 50,000 employees who had completed the orders were let go. California successfully prosecuted the corporation in 1992 for falsely identifying problems with vehicles that were being repaired for unrelated reasons. Criminal accusations were brought in 1997. In 1998, Sears disclosed that it had sold the remains of Western Auto to advance auto parts of Roanoke. Grupo Carso purchased 85% of Sears Mexican affiliates in 1997. Sears sold Citibank its retail credit card business in the United States in 2003. That same year Sears launched Sears Grand, a brand new concept shop. According to a 2021 Forbes article, most Sears Grand locations had closed by 2010. The business stopped being profitable in 2010, from 2011 to 2016, it lost $10.4 billion. At the end of January 2017, the company's total debt, $4.2 billion, was more than its market value. Between 2010 and 2017, Sears' physical store count fell from over 3,500 to 695 in the U.S. Compared to the same quarter in 2015, Sears store sales fell 10.3% in the last quarter of 2016. Chapter 5. Bankruptcy. The retailer's CEO warned that it was too late to save its operations on September 24, 2018. On October 15, 2018, Sears Holdings filed for bankruptcy protection, one day before a $134 million debt payment was due. On November 23, 2018, Sears Holdings published a listing of 505 stores, comprising 266 Sears stores, 
that will host liquidation sales and were up for sale as part of the bankruptcy process. Sears Holdings announced on January 16, 2019, after Lampert won the company's bankruptcy auction with a deal to keep around 400 locations running. A bankruptcy judge authorized a $5.2 billion proposal by Sears chairman and largest shareholder to continue operating the company on February 7, 2019. A total of 425 stores, counting 223 Sears locations, and 45,000 jobs were preserved due to the approval. The same month, Sears closed its locations in Oak Brook, Illinois, and Kanohe, Hawaii's Windward Mall. On August 31, 2019, managers declared that Transform would close 92 more locations by the end of the year, including 15 Sears outlets. By January 2020, 100 more stores would be gone. In 2020 and 2021, more stores closed, with the main mall's final Sears in Maine being one of them. The company's internet site listed 35 Sears outlets as of September 16, 2021. Sears stated in September 2021 that it would close additional locations, including the final Sears location in New York City. By November 24, 2021, Sears in New York City was closed and might be renovated. The last 15 Sears auto centers around the U.S. were closed on January 19, 2022. The company still has a few sites, albeit being a shell of what it once was. Sears Hometown filed into Chapter 11 bankruptcy on December 13, 2022. Later it was discovered that all Sears Hometown locations would be permanently closed and liquidated. 2022 was the year when Sears finally collapsed. Chapter 6. Lessons to Learn from the Rise and Fall of Sears. Sears Rise and Fall serve as a reminder of the importance of staying relevant and adaptive in today's fast-paced business world. It's a story of a company that once dominated the retail landscape but ultimately fell victim to its own complacency and inability to change. Let's remember the legacy of Sears and learn from its mistakes. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. You can also visit our website riseandbust.com for more videos and stories like this.